Let's play with some Peltier. Heat is energy. The absence of heat, also known as cold, is the absence of energy. Behold the thermoelectric cooler, aka Peltier device. It simply moves heat from one side to the other. But they're also said to be very inefficient. Since I'm packing stuff up for the move to Alex Labs, I found all the stuff I need to test this notion on this archaeological dig known as my second desk. I figured it's worth a look. I can think of tons of uses for these. After all, even the butt coolers in my truck seats use these things. Perhaps I can make some sort of spot AC for the LTD, or cool some of the electric turbo controllers we seem to have a tendency to blow up. But first, we need to know what we can expect from these things. And I'm talking real world useful stuff. Like how do these compare with the air conditioner in your car? Can they cool you off? How many would you need? Can they cool your intake piping to give you that little bit of extra power to beat the guy in the other lane? I'm gonna sandwich these two Peltier devices between these two water blocks with some heat sink compound and I'll meet you at the other desk with the test rig. Here's a setup. I'll go through it and explain what's going on while the experiment runs and we can look at the data. But stick around until the end. Something very interesting happened when I shut off the power. This is one of the few times I get to use Imperial units and not feel too bad for viewers from practically every other country that's not the US in that I'm not using metric units. But there's a reason why. Each container contains exactly one pound of water. A British thermal unit, or BTU, is defined as raising or cooling one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit. So each degree change here is one BTU. This is probably the only time where our US units happen to be convenient. Just for reference, a low-end car air conditioner is typically rated around 12,000 BTUs per hour. Incidentally, one watt is equivalent to 3.41 BTUs. We probably averaged around 85 watts over 30 minutes. Over time, you'll see the wattage on the power supply drop. But 85 watts translates to 290 BTUs per hour. But before we get too far into the weeds, let me explain what you're looking at. The two Peltier units are sandwiched between the water blocks and wired in series, just to be a little easier on my power supply. This way I could run twice the voltage, 24 volts instead of 12, but with the equivalent current of a single unit. The container on the left is the cold side, and on the right is the hot side. Each container has a thermometer in it, and the one on the right reads two degrees warmer than the one on the left. But they're close enough that for the purposes of this video, we can ignore the error. Each container has an identical small pump pushing water through the cooling blocks. You can see the streams of water coming out of the tubes just above each container. And on the right is my trusty Minerva stopwatch. It was standard issue fare in my job back in the 90s. So let me spare you the typical fast forward while you watch nothing interesting bit and I'll just show you a graph of the data for running this mess for 35 minutes before I shut off the power. And then we'll get to the I knew that would happen but still didn't expect it bit. So check this out. The hot side got hotter than the cool side got cooler. That's the inefficiency part. If the two curves were equal but opposite you'd have 100% efficiency. At about the 20 minute mark, before the cool side started warming up, the cool side dropped exactly 15 degrees from its baseline while the hot side gained almost 64 degrees, meaning the Peltier devices were showing an efficiency of about 23%. I'm simply dividing 15 by 64 to get that number. I'm not going to lie to you all. This area of science ain't exactly in my wheelhouse, so if I'm calculating efficiency incorrectly, let me know in the comments. But this is logical to me, and a good deal better than the 5% efficiency number you'll find if you search the interwebs. Ultimately, we saw a delta T, a change in temperature, of about 90 degrees. That's pretty impressive to me. But how does all this translate to a real-world scenario like your car? Well, there are a lot of variables that this experiment doesn't take into account. But the biggest one I can think of is how efficiently you can cool the hot side. Let's say it's 90 degrees outside. It's unreasonable to expect you can cool the hot side water to ambient, but let's say in a best case scenario, bordering on miraculous, we can keep the water through a radiator with a good cooling fan only 10 degrees above ambient, or about 100 degrees. And typically, at an ambient temp of 90 degrees, you should see vent temperatures of at least 50 degrees, if not cooler. So that's a delta of 50 degrees. Our funky little setup here hit that in about nine minutes. But as usual, when I go down these rabbit holes, I'm going to ask you all to chime in how to figure out how many cooling BTUs this is capable of. I'm still going to give it a shot. Ready? Here we go. Remember when I said according to the power supply, we averaged about 85 watts or 290 BTUs per hour? Using our graph data, we also figured out a cooling efficiency of 23%. 
23% of 290 is 67 BTUs for two Peltier devices running at 12 volts each. That means we would need 180 setups like this to even match a smaller typical CARS AC system. By the way, that'd be like 15,300 watts at 13.8 volts. You'd need an alternator that's capable of putting out over 1,100 amps just to run it. So does that make these things useless? Not at all. For spot cooling, like my truck seat coolers, they're great. And they do another neat trick. Reverse the polarity and the cooler becomes a heater. Speaking of neat tricks, remember I said something neat happened when I shut off the power? Check it out. My power supply will show voltage on the meter if it's being backfed from whatever it's connected to, even though the power supply's output is off. Since the pumps are still running, we're heating one side of the Peltier devices and cooling the other. And the devices themselves become generators. Granted, kind of crappy generators, but hey, three volts is not insignificant. So thanks for coming along with me on this little experiment that I've always wanted to conduct. I'll be giving you all an update on Alex Lab soon, along with other fun videos. Please give this video a thumbs up as it helps with the almighty algorithm. And of course, subscribe to my channel if this kind of stuff floats your boat. And I'll catch you all in the next one.